The perfect small car does a lot of things pretty well. It'll offer enough space for passengers and their things, returns good fuel economy, and may even be fun to drive when the situation calls for it. Honda's pint size Fit, newly updated for 2018, would like to make good on the promises of functionality, frugality, and fun. How does it look? Every generation of the Fit has seen Honda designers visually stretch and lower the five-door hatch, and this iteration is no exception. The nose is rather pointed and low, and wears the same bold kind of face as the bigger Civic, while the profile makes it appear less upright than other small hatchbacks. My car also accounts for the Honda factory performance kit, which accounts for the wheels and bigger wing and lower stance. How's the storage? The Fit's legacy of creative storage carries on here with a second row magic seat that folds flat into the floor, revealing almost 53 cubic feet of space. The basics of comfortable daily driving are all here in the interior. The cubby under the armrest can hold a phone connected to a USB port. There are big cup holders in front of the shifter, as well as a bonus cup holder left of the steering wheel, and big pockets in each of the doors. Is it roomy? The fit is near the top of the class in terms of passenger volume, and I can tell, especially with the added width versus most subcompacts. Headroom and legroom feel generous behind the wheel, and the rear seats are usable, especially if you're not 6 foot 5 like I am. How does the interior feel? <clears throat> so when I sit down, I immediately really like the sense of space and lightness that's in this cabin. We've got these really big quarter windows in here, which are obviously good for visibility, but they also help the overall sense of roominess in here. Uh, beyond that, I do love the titanium shift knob uh, from the HFP package, though I don't like the red floor mats that come with it. Is it well equipped? The fit you see here is a sport trim car with the previously mentioned Honda factory performance kit. A standard fit sport is second up the trim level, netting things like 16 inch alloy wheels and the seven inch touchscreen display that the base model doesn't get. Our HFP car gets a few racy looking pieces like that shift knob I love, a different wheel design, and this cheeky little wing on top of the hatch. How's the infotainment system? Honda's media interface seems to get a little better with every iteration, and this 7-inch display is no exception. There is a volume knob, which everybody loves, and the touchscreen itself is responsive. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are on every trim level except for the base LX. Baked-in navigation, however, is only available as a $1,000 option on the top trim Fit EXL, which is about $5,000 more than our test car. Is it a good daily driver? One thing you'll definitely notice compared to the outgoing fit is that Honda has reduced the volume on the inside in terms of wind noise and road noise, so it's a little bit more of a pleasant place to live with. It might still not be top of class here. I drove a Rio a couple weeks ago that was a little bit better, um, but you're not gonna hear as much buzzing as you did before. But what I love about the fit as a daily driver is this amazing visibility, kind of 360 degrees, combined with the fact that I'm in a small car. It just makes it so maneuverable, both in and out of traffic and when I'm just kind of driving around a parking lot, uh, that, that it's a fantastic tool for the workday world. Is it fun to drive? Now, you'll definitely notice that we are not in Detroit. Part of that is because we had a little bit of an issue with our studio, but also because we thought that this particular fit would be a great car to come out and bring on a country road. It's part of the genius of the fit is that unlike other cars in this class, you're actually getting something that really enjoys going around a corner. There are a few reasons for that, and I definitely can't ignore uh, the HFP kit that's helping me out here. The springs are just a little bit stiffer, so when I'm in a cornering stance, the car is just rolling less, which is nice. 
Well, fit is right in the game in terms of the subcompacts. 130 horsepower and 114 pound-feet of torque are not a lot. And the truth is that you really do have to ring out the car to be able to feel all of those 130 horsepower. That would normally be a bad thing, right? But actually, it's a fun thing in this car because this six-speed gearbox is awesome. Overall, and especially on a road like this, you just get really lightweight but accurate steering, nippy handling, quick turn in, and all the other things that make an enjoyable drive. And the fact that you can have fun in this car at 16 or 17 or $18,000 is actually really remarkable in today's segment. How's the fuel economy? With the awesome manual transmission, you do lose quite a chunk of fuel economy. My car is rated at 29 miles per gallon in the city and 36 on the highway, where the CVT equipped car goes for 33 city and 40 highway. How much is it? The fit starts at $16,190 for the LX and runs up to $20,520 for the EXL before you start adding options. A fit sport with the manual trans, as you see it here, runs $18,375 after delivery and destination. What are the negatives? Honda doesn't have the quietest or the cheapest car in the subcompact hatchback space. And if you opt for the very good manual transmission, you will be paying a little bit more at the pump too. Who should buy it? If your car buying goals include having something that's fun to drive in addition to being very practical, then the fit really lives up to its name. The little Honda has always been a cut-rate enthusiast car, and that hasn't changed a bit for 2018. 